Hello and welcome. Remember, PT1 element. D element plus PT1 element reached a DT1 element. PT element plus PT1 element re reached a PTT1 element. Okay. And now, big question, I element plus PT1 element, how will this element be called? Of course, this would be called IT1 element. IT1 element. This is the next base element the next combined uh, standard element we're talking about. Okay. Again, two elements. One element is the I element, and the other one element is the PT1 element. We do have an input, the I output, and then we do have an output, XI from S and XO from S. This we had already. Okay. G, T1, KT, divided by 1 plus S, T. I also write as T2. I element, remember, here we've got it, yeah. One divided by STI. Okay. GI one divided by STI. So our global transfer function G from S is GI from S multiplied by GT1 from S. Okay. Let's see what the result is. This is 1 divided by STI multiplied by KT divided 1 plus st2. Okay, so in total we could write kt divided by sti 1 plus st2. Okay, and these things here, this is constant. Yeah, so I simply say. This KT, it's already inside my TI. Okay, so I can simply substitute this with a new TI. Okay? And here I write ST2. Okay? This TI now contains the old TI and KT. This, the formula. What does it mean? What does it mean for our uh, frequency response? 1 divided by J omega Ti 1 plus J omega T2. Okay. 
Let's have a look. Imaginary axis, real axis. This part here, this part. J omega di. This is just going up. And here we have omega ti. This part, okay, this part, here we have one, I will use blue, here we have one, yeah, and here plus omega t2. And these two we're going to multiplicate. This means the absolute value of this multiplied, multiplicated with the absolute value of this. The two angles are added to each other, yeah, and then zero minus this will be. Okay. Let's think what it would mean for omega equals zero. Yeah. What's with the absolute value from j zero? If omega is zero, this is zero. This is zero, one, we will reach, we will reach unlimited, simply. Okay. Because this will get zero, one divided by zero is unlimited. And the argument, is this 90 degree will not go away. Yeah, this will always be 90 degree, but this angle will go to zero, so it's 90 degree, yeah, and divided means minus 90 degree. So we will start at minus 90 degree. Okay. Looks like an I element. Okay. At omega infinity, what does it mean? This will be a really big multiply multiplicated with also really big twice really big one divided by twice really big is zero okay and the argument ah, here is an infinity of course and the argument here we have the 90 degree this will stay 90 degree if this is getting bigger 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 this here will also be 90 degree 90 plus 90 is 180 one divided by 180 is minus 180. Okay. These are the points. Okay. These are the points. That's the mathematical description of the I element. Okay. We can even calculate this a little bit further because this j omega equals 1 divided by j omega ti and now j squared is minus 1 minus omega squared ti t2 so this is 1 divided by minus omega squared ti t2 plus j omega ti this is easier for calculating the absolute value. Okay? Because there is a real part, there is an imaginary part. It will work as before. Let's have a look on this. Okay? IT1 element. IT1 element, G from S, is 1 divided by STI 1 plus ST2 okay so basically what we have here is 1 divided by STI multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus ST2 this is a PT1 element yeah, with K1 and this here this here is an I element okay, with TI. Okay.
Let's remember the step response of an I element. It is here zero. Then we're starting to pile up. Here we have this TI. This was the step response of a PT1 element. Now, what will this, what will a PT1, this is the I element, and what will a PT1 element do with this? It will sh soften it. So basically, we will reach here somewhere parallel that's the infinity value yeah? and we will start here okay? we will start here going away yeah? and we, we will then move faster 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 until we are parallel to the I element yeah? this is a relative step response here we are at zero yeah? Then we will start to grow faster, faster, faster until we are equally fast as the I element alone. This is the step response. Okay. This is exactly how it looks like. Ah, by the way, here. We can still here see this. Yeah. This would be the time t2. And here, until we reach 1, this is again ti. Okay. So from the step response, we can still derive these two things. It's hard to measure, let's say. But now, let's have a look at the body plot. Okay. Let's have a look at the body plot. Here, it's 15, T2, I selected 15. Yeah. The band frequency of a PT1 element with T2 15 is 1 divided by 15. 1 divided by 15 equals 0 0.06. 0 0.06, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we are, somewhere here, 0 0.066. So this will be here and here we're starting to bend to here, to here, to here. Yeah. This is how the PT1 part is looking. Okay, this part. 1, okay, divided by 1 plus S2 and T2 we see here is 15, 1 divided by 15 is here. So, also here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here we have minus 45 degree. Yeah. Here we have minus 90 degree. This is how the PT1 part will look like. Yeah. Now, let's have a look on the I part. Remember... Yeah. Ti, this pinching frequency here, is 1 divided by Ti. Okay. This 1 divided by Ti, Ti is 10, is a tenth. Yeah. So it will look like this. Here they are very close together, but parallel, yeah. and here it will grow. Okay, and here we're always at minus 90. So, from the PT1 bar, we got this. And from the I part, we are adding minus 90. So in total, 
we end up here at minus 134 and we will look like this and end up here at 180 okay this was what the math was also telling us minus 180 and minus 90 minus 90 minus 180 just by overlaying those two those two elements okay and now here how will this look like up to this yeah, band frequency here here we here we bend yeah. it's simply multiplication by one so here we will stay the same yeah. and suddenly here we are starting to drop twice as fast as before okay so here we are at two yeah? and ten times higher frequency we will be here yeah? at two hundredth not two tenth yeah so we'll start to drop very steep down here okay and this is exactly how an IT1 element looks like. And here we will have some transfer area, then we will follow the other line. Okay. The band frequency here, yeah, where this knick, this band is happening, is 1 divided by T2. That's because this is coming from the PT1 element. And here the pinching frequency of the IT element is 1 divided by TI. Okay. And again, at low frequencies we reach unlimited. At high frequencies we reach zero. And here we see the high frequencies must not even be that high. Yeah? So we are going faster to zero than just with an I element. So the IT1 element is really at low frequencies it behaves like an I element. At high frequencies it really drops. Yeah, it's twice as uh, aggressive as an I element. A lot of times uh, the control loop, the open control loop, has this behavior. We will see this. Yeah? We will see this. IT1 element. The map and the graphic solution. Yeah? Step response, frequency response, characteristic transfer yeah? equation. That's it for now for the combined elements. Yeah? Next time we are talking about another element. It is really inconvenient. Yeah. Dotzeit element. Delay element. Yeah. Bah. We'll see. It's annoying. Yeah. But this will be next time. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.